So a very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this series on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. In the last lecture, we had established the relevance of the signal to noise ratio for the bit error or symbol error performance of a communication system and uh, we had seen how does the signal to noise ratio perform for a PAM system. In this lecture, we will generalize it to a or we will redraw those plots for a PSK system. Uh, that solves. That would be the first thing and then we will move on to another uh, addressing another question. So, this was the constellation. So, we had changed from we have we had gone from the SNR, we have gone from the noise power to the SNR. So, let me define SNR actually slightly differently because we talk about the signal to noise ratio in terms of decibels. So, let me say that I want, so let me use PowerPoint first, say that, so for completeness let me define decibel. So, signal noise ratio is generally expressed in decibels. So, this is a ratio, so it is a dimensionless quantity. So, decibel kind of gives us a unit to measure it. I will just say, I will use the phrase kind of and not directly. Yeah, signal to noise ratio is generally expressed in decibels or dB and so, I define, so given SNR or signal to noise ratio is ES by N naught, then to express it in dB, SNR in dB is expressed as 10 log to the base 10 of ES by N naught. When uh, everything is in power, you in your analog electronics course, you might have come across that 20 log 10 and uh, there might be a confusion, but uh, since we are talking about powers, we will always uh, use this notation of 10 log 10 ES by N naught. So, now if I define SNR in dB, so this can be both negative and positive. So, let me quickly say that I want this to be defined for a signal to noise ratio of minus 10 to 10. So, in that case, the signal to noise ratio becomes 10 to the power so SNR dB. Then, and uh, that said, I can this and hold on and I will do grid on and X label is DB and Y label is symbol error this. So, now this will give me a handle on how things work. So, let us say yes, this is a problem this. So, yeah this has to be done element wise cancel and this has to be done element wise and run and this is done minus 10 and y label had a spelling error so that needs to be corrected and this let me run it again and done. This and this is BPSK or binary PAM. Let me repeat this till an SNR of 20. 
why the reason will become apparent very soon so I'll just mute this and let it run so this will take a minute and then it will show and this is here so this is m equals to now let's see let's say i want to 4 pm this is done and normalized 4 pm we normalized the energy yesterday or in the last lecture so this is there so symbol error probability for binary pm and symbol error probability for 4 pm now suppose i also want to test the symbol error probability for 4 psk or compare these probabilities against 4 psk so let me do it right now rather than waiting what i'll do is define the i'll work directly with the code book and i'll play with the code book to say that star pi star dot star zeros to m minus one m. So this this gives me a PSK code book or a PSK constellation. I run this, run this, and this will appear. So four PSK actually performs slightly better than four PM. Let me now repeat this for eight PSK, and finally I'll do it for eight PM. So I can do this for any manually defined constellation as well but uh, and I'll add so this is 8 PSK as expected performs worse and let's finally do 8 PM which looks like finally this and this should perform the worst of all and here it is so we can go all the way up to 30 dB to make these look better but uh, I'll just just for the sake of convenience and let's truncate it at uh, we are going to save it so here it is I'll just plot this here and label it because that is something uh, yes I'll plot it here and label it so that it's clear so this is actually let me do it in powerpoint only draw and I want to loop in so this is bpsk slash 2 pm obviously i can extend this analysis to any arbitrary qm constellation as well that's uh, simply a matter of code defining the code book now i leave that as an exercise for you and then this is i think i'll PowerPoint and reopen it. That should solve this problem. So this is so this is QPSK. This is four PM purple. Okay, and finally green is 8 pm I can do 16 qm or rectangular qm here as well 8 rectangular qm here as well that uh, actually I let me do that Keep. since we are discussing this but uh, rectangular 8 qm I will define manually rather than going for or rather than going for a code based definition I'll define that manually so minus 3 plus or minus 3 minus 1i minus 3 plus 1i minus 1 minus 1i minus 1 
minus one minus minus one plus one i. Let us look at this constellation first and then we will look at its performance relative to the other constellations. So this and I will remove the minuses here. This I'm done. So let us look at this constellation first or this 8 QM constellation first in terms of the noise performance and and this goes for a toss don't need this anymore this and this changes and no let me run this This is this should be commas. Should be separated by commas and otherwise it generates a square array, which will be a problem. We'll use this. Yeah. So this and oh, this is a different beast altogether. I didn't think of this. So so this is here. Let me remind me to close this figure. Yes, so this is the constellation which uh, is well within our expectations and this is the normal energy normalized constellation. So this is what the 8QM constellation looks like. Let me copy the constellation from here paste copies constellation is here the new figure is closed hold on I'll move here just to be extra sure and I'll run 8QM here so this is done the figure that we are talking about 8QM should appear here once it is done yeah, it's done and so 8QM performs almost or 8QM is performing slightly better black just for so 8QM is performing marginally better or almost identical with 8PM so this is naturally I will write it here that PowerPoint showing ads so I will paste that here and that will be the end of it BPSK, QPSK, 4 p.m., 8 p.s.k. and 8 p.m. the only thing needs to be adjusted now is this black plot and this should be 8 QAM so this is the relative comparison or this is a relative comparison of the performance of different modulation schemes so comparison of different modulation schemes for the same energy per symbol for the same energy per symbol but you might uh, also want to ask that uh, since a higher order constellation gives us the flexibility of transmitting more bits we want to maintain the same energy per bit in that case we can repeat this experiment just that uh, in that case we can repeat this experiment just that uh, now we say that we normalize the energy with respect to the number of bits in the constellation that is 
log two of length of a. This so for the same energy per bit, if I repeat this, then so you can see that uh, there are multiple ways in which we can interpret uh, this uh, business of constellations so for the same energy per bit if i okay let me close this figure it's done and it was already open so so this is so this is the symbol here probability for m equals 8 which is on 8 qm now let me repeat this for bpsk and for bpsk this will be this is for bpsk or to for qpsk this this and sorry this this is for qpsk same energy per bit. This will be interesting actually. And oh, I should have multi divided it by this. So, I should have put in brackets over here. My bad. I made an error. It should be divided by this energy, not to. So, it should be multiplied with this energy, not divided by it. So, should for the same energy per bit. This was, a, this was wrong and there should have been a bracket. Yes. So let us repeat this. Let us do it for BPSK first. This, this is for BPSK. Let us repeat this for QPSK. Only marginally worse. So, now you see that uh, QPSK is only marginally worse than BPSK. Next, let us repeat this for 4 pm. Repeating this for 4 pm, we get this for then let us do this for 8 pm while we are at it. The symbols can be in any order, they need not be ordered because there is any way being chosen at random. This is for 8 pm and finally we will do this for then we will do this for 8 qm. And we put minus here. Put another minus here, put another minus here, put another minus here. We run this. We get 8 qm, which is again almost identical to 4 pm. And finally, we do this for 8 psk. 8 psk is Zero to seven. Since I am doing everything manually, divided by eight. Run and this. So we we'll get this for eight psk as well, and we have one for eight psk as well. So, which is the fun part? If I copy this directly without any cosmetic changes and put this on this slide. 
actually let me put these two figures side by side so these are bpsk this is qpsk which is so the colors are different that's a problem so this and this are qpsk so you see that when you have the same and same amount of energy when you are expending the same amount of energy per bit then QPSK performs just slightly worse than VPSK. Whereas when you are expending the same amount of energy per symbol, QPSK performs much worse than VPSK. Similarly, when you are expending the same amount of energy per bit, 4 pm, QPS, 8 PSK and 8 QM perform almost identically in terms of the symbol error probability. Whereas when you are expending the same amount of energy per symbol, 4 pm is naturally better than 8 psk in terms of the probability of error but uh, eventually we will be trying to use uh, or eventually we want uh, the same amount of energy spent spent per bit or uh, we measure everything in terms of the number of the information that we have transmitted or the bits that we have transmitted so naturally here there is a tie here there is a if you want uh, symbol error probability then there is a clear winner so this is uh, this along with a lot of other factors decides what type of constellations will you be using for eventually transmitting your data over a communication channel so that's uh, all about our discussion on uh, various constellations with coherent detection so this form of detection so let me add just one more note before we finish this lecture so form of symbol detection where we know the phase of the received signal is known as coherent detection let's go for detection fine so and there are two more or there's one more form of so like uh, we consider a one dimensional or a two dimensional vector based on if you look at it as a real vector then it will be a two dimensional vector qm in general will be a two dimensional vector if you look at it uh, or if you consider a complex number to be a one dimensional thing then it will be a one dimensional vector so similar to this we have uh, talked about multidimensional signal spaces. So naturally, we can transmit and receive multidimensional signals or we can build constellations with multidimensional signals and uh, we can receive those multidimensional signals in the presence of noise and uh, still use the minimum distance criterion to detect those. And there is naturally the idea of index modulation so where we transfer so let me first demonstrate a multidimensional signal then we'll talk about quickly talk about index modulation before we end this lecture so con the constellation in case of so let me save this as multidimensional not much will change just that we won't be able to visualize the constellation that easily so the constellation now suppose i use three dimensional signals so a is a matrix now a is say 1 a is a matrix of column vectors so let me say that A is C 
say the identity matrix. Zero, one, zero, and zero, zero, one, and let's say that there's a fourth signal, one, one, one. So this is the constellation that we want to talk about, then A is this, then let me see what MATLAB does. So, So we want the Frobenius norm of A. So let me quickly use MATLAB help to see Frobenius norm is the absolute of a matrix. So in this case we want the Frobenius norm of A. So it's searching Frobenius norm. My spelling was incorrect. So, yeah. Yeah, so norm A comma fro that I have to Frobenius norm for matrix. So A is this and because I need the total energy of need to normalize the total energy of A. So need Frobenius norm of A. So, this is the Frobenius norm of A. So, which is the trace of A Hermitian by the way. So, I will just use PowerPoint. So, just use notes here. So, these signals can be represented as columns from a matrix order to normalize the transmitted energies, we can normalize the total energy of the set matrix which will equal the sum of the norms, norm squares, squares of all the vectors in the matrix and so if this leads us to define the Frobenius norm of a matrix, so this leads to define the Frobenius norm of a matrix, so if A equals A1, An, then Frobenius norm of A squared equals summation of Ai, i goes from 1 to n and this is also equal to trace of Aa Hermitian. So with this knowledge we want to normalize the Frobenius norm of A, so square, so this, this is the and trace of A, A Hermitian, 
which is also 6. So, numerator term becomes trace of a Hermitian length of a is 4 which is fine and this. So, again uh, I have it an a this gives me an a or rather this will give me an a which has been normalized with respect to the number of columns. So, or this will give me an A, so my bad. So, which has been normalized with respect to the energies or you can say that I can alternatively have a 2 cross 1, uh, 2 cross 2 A which uh, represents 1 bit. So, that or I can have, so let me start with a 2 cross 2 A actually that will binary operations are always simpler. This will give an error, but A is a 2 by 2 identity matrix and we have normalized A, this. So, now let I want to identify or I want to generate random columns from A. So, So, in order to do that, I pick up random columns from A and if I do this, what I will get is so. S is now the transmitted signal now consists of uh, one of the two columns of A. Obviously, this requires the noise to be generated equivalently and the overall noise should be equal. So, say equivalence or number of columns since we need the number of rows so or this ne noise needs to be uniformly distributed over all the columns. So, this and this and this and we get. So, now what we see is we get noise that is we get a two dimensional noise that gets added to the two dimensional signal. So, this is done. So, with this we say that we, so this is done. Now, after that we take the corresponding column of S and simply take the corresponding columns 
from so now instead of uh, we take one column of y because y you see or the received signal you see is now a matrix with each column representing the signal received at a particular instant and the code book again is in the form of column so we take the norm the norm of their difference which will give me the distance between the two and I do this So let me see if this works for vectors. This not equal to thing. I'm not sure if it will work. So this for a vector will return another vector. I want a scalar here. So for that, what I do is take maximum. So this maximum, what it will do is wherever there is a, so let me, so this maximum will be, so since this is a, double so wherever the vector doesn't match this will either be a 0 or a 1 so if it's all zeros it will be 0 but if the vector doesn't even match even at one place then it will not it's not not matching so this will return a 1 whenever these s and s hat don't match and whenever s and s hat match this will give me a 0 so this is uh, fine and this and so this is how we compare these and now let me run this set c1 yes so this should be taken care of this should be a vector on the left hand side as well and done this should be a colon this and run this again and this is for a two dimensional signal Please bear that in mind. This will take uh, slightly longer than a one dimensional signal. It is actually taking much longer than a one dimensional signal. Should have done this for a smaller number, but now it's fine. This is done. If I look at the plot, there's no plot. I possibly plot this again so this is the symbol error probability plot At m equals 8 I should let go so this and this runs oh, I run it again this will take some time so after this we will repeat this for a four dimensional matrix this will, it will take even longer, but uh, this will give us some good insights into the workings of this thing. So, maybe you can cut this part and the next one. Yes, so this and so this is there. And let me now run this for a 3 by 3 matrix or a 3 by 3 identity matrix that anyway may not have a that easily interpretable physical connotation in terms of bits but uh, nonetheless this is and done and I will run this So this will take some time again, but uh, obviously you can uh, use this for other expressions or you can do this for other levels as well, but uh, we'll just do this for 2 and 3 and see what happens. Yes, this is there and uh, we see that uh, normalize for the same energy per bit, it's 3 times 3 is performing better. So why? To answer that, let's actually normalize it to the same amount of energy per symbol and run this again. We will look at this and uh, in the next lecture, we will 
look at uh, what is happening that leads to a better performance of uh, this three dimensional signal as compared to the two dimensional signal but for that to get that let's first normalize this with respect to the symbol energies and see what happens or instead of uh, transmitting at the same energy per bit let's transmit the same energy per symbol and see what happens done and uh, performs nearly identical with the 2 by 2 matrix so or with the 2 bit case or the single symbol case so what happens we will look at that in the next lecture thank you mm -hmm.